What's up guys, Eric here from Techisode TV and today we're taking a look at the Galaxy Watch and how well it works with the iPhone XS Max. As you can see, I also have my Gear S3 here paired to my Galaxy Note 9 to show you guys what different applications and features look like when paired to an Android device versus being paired to an iPhone. So we're going to start this off by taking a look at everything you can do with a Galaxy Watch paired to an iPhone. Then we're going to finish it up with everything you can't do with a Galaxy Watch paired to the iPhone. One of the most common questions is whether or not you get access to the Galaxy App Store to download watch faces and other applications for your Galaxy Watch. And the answer is yes, sort of. So to get to the App Store, you have to open up the Galaxy Watch application. Now this application would have had to have been installed when you first connected your Galaxy Watch to your smartphone. So you'll definitely have this installed if you've already paired your watch to your phone. So when you open up the Galaxy Watch application, you need to make sure you're in the settings window. So tap settings in the bottom right. Otherwise you'll be in the info section. So go to settings and at the bottom, you're gonna see Galaxy apps, tap that. And that's gonna take you right into the Galaxy Watch app store. Now from here, you can download a ton of different watch faces and applications, but there are a number of applications you don't have access to. But I'll cover those when I talk about the things that you can't do with a Galaxy Watch when paired to an iPhone. The important thing right now is that you do have access to the Galaxy App Store and you can download thousands of different watch faces and thousands of different applications for the Galaxy Watch. So another common question is whether or not you can get exercise tracking on the Galaxy Watch when you're paired to an iPhone, and the answer is yes. So as you can see here, I can open up the Samsung Health application, and it's gonna show me the calories burned, number of steps, number of floors climbed, and then there's also the exercise option here. If I tap this, and I tap workout, I can select from a bunch of different workouts, and if I go all the way over here and hit the plus sign, I can add an exercise, as you can see, you have all of the same exercises that are available when you're connected to an Android device. And in case you're wondering, you can still track repetitions when paired to the iPhone. Something else that's important to point out is that you can sync your exercise data to your phone, but you do need the Samsung Health app to do that. So just go to the App Store and look up Samsung Health, and then just download that application. And when you do, and you open it, you can sync that application to your watch. So you can see that I did two reps of arm curls just a second ago. And then I have the steps and my average heart rate, number of floors climbed, and uh, active minutes for the day, and so on and so forth. Now, unfortunately, none of this data transfers to Apple's health application. So if you really wanted to use the health application that Apple has, then you're kind of stuck using an Apple Watch to do that. While I'm in the Samsung Health app, I do want to point out that you can also get the automatic sleep tracking feature on the Galaxy Watch when paired to the iPhone. So if I tap this little sleep icon here, go to trends and go back a few days, you can see here on October 27th, I had some poor sleep. If I scroll down, you can see this little chart here that shows how much time was spent awake, how much time was spent in REM, light sleep, and deep sleep, which apparently <laughs> I never made it there because I woke up a bunch of times uh, throughout the night. Rounding out the health features, you can also do continuous heart rate tracking and continuous stress monitoring as well when paired to the iPhone, just like you can on an Android device. Notifications on the Galaxy Watch when you're connected to an iPhone are actually pretty limited. So if I scroll over here, you can see that I have a Twitter notification. If I tap this, I can scroll to the bottom and clear that notification, or I could tap these three dots on the right, and that gives me the option to obviously clear the notification, or I can block notifications from this application. So if there's an app that I don't wanna get notifications from on the Galaxy Watch, then I would just tap this and it would block notifications from Twitter. Now this won't block Twitter notifications on the iPhone. I'll still get them there. If I change my mind later on and I wanna get those Twitter notifications back on my wrist, all I have to do is grab my iPhone, open the Galaxy Watch app, tap settings on the bottom, tap notifications, tap blocked notifications, and then tap the minus button and then delete. And now I'll get Twitter notifications on my Galaxy Watch again. You do get the ability to make phone calls. So if you open up the phone application, you can see that I have my wife here as a recent contact. 
if I tap this contacts icon at the top, you can see that I can scroll through all of my other contacts that I have available on my iPhone. Now, this does sync all the contacts from your iPhone. You just have to accept the permission. When it pops up on the iPhone, you'll be able to see all of your contacts. And if I tap one of these, then it'll show me all the numbers and then I can call that person directly. Now, if I back out once here, I'm just gonna go ahead and call my wife real quick and then tap the call button there. It's dialing, you can hear that the speaker is working here. And I'm gonna go ahead and answer the call. So you can see you get three options here. The first one changes the speaker volume. The one at the end mutes the microphone, so I won't be actually talking to the person on the other end, or rather they can't hear me. I get these three dots over here, which lets me get to the keypad. And I can also tap this center one, and that is going to push the call over to the phone. So if I was talking to someone and I wanted the call to go private because I'm talking about something personal and I don't want everyone to hear from the speaker on the watch, I just push it over to the phone that way. And now, as you can see, that call is now on my iPhone. If I wanted to push it back to the Galaxy Watch, all I have to do is tap audio, tap Galaxy Watch, and now it's gonna push the call back over to the Galaxy Watch. And obviously when you're done, just tap the hang up icon, and that's it. If you were to receive a call, you can just scroll the bezel on your phone, and that will take the call on the watch itself, and then the same conditions apply, so if you wanna push that back to your phone, you just tap the icon in the middle, and that'll push it right back to your phone. Find My Watch is something that's available when paired to an iPhone, but it's pretty limited. So right now I'm in the Galaxy Watch application on both phones, and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. So let's open it there, open it there. Now they both have this little start symbol here. And if I tap this, it's going to make both watches ring and vibrate. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so there you go. They were just ringing and vibrating when I was looking for them. And that's all fine and dandy, but as you can see, there's this control remotely option here on the Galaxy Note 9 that's not shown on the iPhone. Now if I open this up, this adds the ability to locate my gear. So if I tap this, it's actually gonna find the GPS location of my gear and tell me exactly where it is. And then there's also this option to lock the gear. So if I tap this and I turn this on, it's going to lock the gear. Now, I can't do anything on it. So if I, if I click any buttons, if I roll the bezel, nothing's gonna happen. It's just gonna pop up with this icon that says gear locked. And if I tap that, it says that it has to be unlocked from the smartphone. If I tap unlock over here, it releases it. And now I can use the watch again. If I go back, you also get this option to reset the gear. So if you lose it, someone steals it, something like that, you can erase all the data from it remotely. And those are a few things that you can't do when connected to an iPhone. Fortunately, the iPhone does at least give you reactivation lock. And what this does is it makes you enter a password every time the Galaxy Watch is reset to make sure that no one takes your watch and tries to factory reset it without your permission. You also get the option to go the other way and find your phone, but it's pretty limited with the iPhone. So if I open up the application here on the watch and I tap this little search icon, it's going to send a notification. Now, notice how my iPhone is on vibrate mode right now. It kept it on vibrate and it just sent a notification and made the phone vibrate with that notification, but it won't turn the ringer on or do anything like that. So if your ringer's not on, you better hope that your iPhone is somewhere where you could actually hear it vibrate. Otherwise, this isn't gonna be very useful for you. On the other hand, if I tap find my phone when paired to an Android device and I tap start, as you can see, it starts ringing very loudly, even though my phone is on vibrate, as you can tell from the icon up on top, it still overrides that vibrate setting and makes the phone ring very loudly to make it much easier to find. If you tap these three dots when connected to an Android device, you can see that you also get this option to locate the phone using GPS. So even if your phone's not with you, you can still track it down. If you use the built-in music player application on the Galaxy Watch, you do get full control of your music. As you can see here, you can skip forward, skip backward, you can obviously play pause, and you can even adjust the volume up and down 
right from your watch. But there are two things that are missing when paired with an iPhone versus an Android phone. The first missing feature, which you do get when connected to an Android device, is album art. So as you can see here, the album art is shown for the particular song right in the background, which is pretty cool. And if I switch to the next song, then you can see that the album art also changes. The second thing that you don't get when paired to an iPhone, but you do get when paired to an Android device, is the ability to look at your entire playlist. So as you can see here, I can scroll through my playlist, find a song I want further down the playlist, tap that, and then it will start playing that song. Let's say for some reason you took a lot of steps one day, or maybe very few steps one day, and you want to take a screenshot of it and send it to someone or do something like that. Well, you can take a screenshot by holding the home button and swiping from left to right across the screen, but you can't send it anywhere. So if I go back here and I go and navigate to the gallery, and I can go ahead and tap this, there's my screenshot right there. If I tap these three dots, I just get the option to delete it. So while it's cool that you could take this screenshot, it kind of becomes useless because you can't send it to your phone to then share with someone. There's not even a direct share option for images either. Granted, I don't know too many people who are gonna use this screenshot feature too often anyway, but you guys should know of its limitations. While you can't send images from your watch to your phone, you can send them from the phone to the watch. So here I am in the Galaxy Watch app again. In the settings section, you can see that there's an option to copy images to your watch. If I tap this, tap on an image, then tap copy, it's going to send that image right over to my watch. <laughs> Once it's sent, you'll get a notification. If I go over to that notification, I can tap it, open app, and as you can see right here, I have the image that I just sent over. And if I back out of here and I long press the watch face, I can then scroll over until I see My Photo Plus and then tap Customize, then tap the center icon, tap Add Photo, and now I can add the photo that I just sent over and I can zoom in and out with the bezel, and I can kind of scroll around and get it to be just where I want it. Tap OK, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a second photo, and there's nothing really else that I have here. Let's go ahead and add one of these default photos here. They've got, uh, what is this here? This is an interesting looking thing, so we'll go ahead and add that. Tap OK, and if I swipe over twice more, then I can choose the size of clock that I have. So I can have it either small clock on the bottom or a large clock in the middle. We're just gonna go ahead and stick with the small clock on the bottom. Tap OK. And now you can see that I have an image here and my clock on the bottom. And if I tap it, it switches to the next image. And as you saw, I can have up to 20 of these images. So it could be pictures of you know friends, families, landscapes, things like that. And this is a practical use for sending images from your phone to your watch. Beyond copying images to your watch, you can also transfer music, but the only way that you can do that is if you connect your Galaxy Watch directly to a computer using a Wi-Fi network. If your Galaxy Watch was connected to an Android device, you'd be able to select tracks saved directly on the device and transfer those to the watch without needing to connect to a computer. The Spotify application does technically work when paired to the iPhone, but it only works for premium subscribers and you do have to log in. And the other issue with it is that you can't control your Spotify music that you're currently playing on your phone. If you wanna do that, you have to use the built-in music control application. So Spotify, when paired to an iPhone, is really only good for people who have a premium membership and just want to use it for the ability to have offline music when they go for a run or something like that and they don't want to have their phone with them. So that's it for the major things that you can do with the Galaxy Watch when paired to an iPhone. Now let's take a look at the big things that you can't do. Message notifications are extremely limited when paired to an iPhone. So as you can see, I got a message from my wife that says, hey, what's up? If I tap that message, I can clear it. If I scroll down, I get no extra options. If I tap the three dots, I can clear it, or I can block notifications from the messaging application. And that's it. That's all you can do when paired to an iPhone. You also don't even get a messages application anywhere on the watch, and you can't download one either. So what that means is you also can't even look back at previous messages once you clear them, and you can't start new messages either. When you're paired to an Android device, you get a lot more options. So here you can see I have a message notification, and if I tap it, 
I can then quickly reply to that message. But if I scroll down, I get a few more options. So this top left icon will let me dictate a message with my voice. The middle one will let me reply with emojis, and the top right one will let me handwrite or type a message. The blue responses are based off of the message that I received. So the message said, what's up? And my responses are, I'm fine and you, or not good. And these blue responses will change based on the message you received. The white messages below are your typical canned responses that you can set up on your phone. And at the very bottom, you get the option to edit your responses or create a little doodle to send instead. If you guys want to see a lot more detail about the Messages application, or really any application that comes with the Galaxy Watch or the Gear S3, definitely check out my detailed apps review by clicking the card above or the link in the description. Scrolling back to the top, you can see that there's also three dots that I can tap. If I tap these dots, I get the option to obviously reply, call the person back, create a reminder to message them back later, open the text on my phone, open the messaging app on my watch, block the app, which will just stop the Messages app from being able to send notifications to the watch, or clear the notification. So as you can see, when it comes to messages, you get a ton more functionality when paired to an Android device versus an Apple device. Another major feature that's missing when you're paired to an iPhone is the ability to use Samsung Pay, or really any mobile payment for that matter. So typically, if you hold the back button for three seconds, you would open up Samsung Pay. But right now, you can see that since I'm paired to an iPhone, that does absolutely nothing. However, if I grab my Gear S3, which is paired to my Note 9, and I hold the back button, then you'll see that it asks me to enter a PIN. Once you enter the PIN, it then takes you into Samsung Pay, where you can then pay using your watch. Changing the watch faces on the Galaxy Watch is easy enough just by long pressing and then swiping or scrolling through the different watch faces, and then you can go ahead and customize and change it however you'd like, and that's, that's simple enough. But something that you can't do when paired to the iPhone is change the watch face from the iPhone itself. So you can see over here on the Galaxy Note 9, I have an option called Watch Faces, and that does not show up anywhere here on the iPhone. If I tap that, it's going to show me all of the available watch faces that I have installed on my Gear S3. And all I have to do is find one that I like, tap it, and it'll change right over on the watch. Now this comes in really handy if you're someone who downloads a ton of watch faces. If you've downloaded 20, 30, 40, even 50 watch faces, then it's gonna be really hard to scroll through all those watch faces on the watch itself. So it'd be really easy to open up the application and you can quickly just scroll through all of your watch faces and pick the one you like. Another missing feature that is particularly disappointing to me is the SmartThings application. Now obviously since that's not on the Galaxy Watch when paired to an iPhone, I can't show you that at all here, but I do have it on my Gear S3, which is paired to my Note 9. So as you can see, I have the SmartThings application. If I open this, this lets me do a ton of home control things. So as you can see, I have these different scenes. I have good night, good morning, vacation. If I tap any of these scenes, it's going to do a bunch of different things in my house. It'll turn on or off different lights and set a whole bunch of different things up automatically based on the different scenes. And I can keep on going here and I can see that my garage door is closed. I can turn on an air conditioner. And if I keep on going, you can see that my basement light is off, but I can tap this and turn the light on. So you can see that light is now on. If I go over here, my kitchen light's on. If I tap that, then I can turn that light off. And this is just scratching the surface of everything that you can do with smart things. So if you're one of those people who use a lot of smart products, you're gonna be pretty disappointed to find out that when you pair your Galaxy Watch to your iPhone, you're not gonna be able to control any of those things from your watch. If you guys wanna see a much more in-depth review of the Smart Things application, particularly on the Galaxy Watch, definitely check out my top 10 most useful applications for the Galaxy Watch video that I'll have linked with a card above or a link in the description. Another missing feature is the lack of a camera application. So when you're paired to an iPhone, there is no way to get any application to control your phone's camera from your watch. So you won't be able to use your watch to take pictures or videos like you can when you pair it to an Android device. 
GPS tracking applications are another thing that are not supported when you're paired to an iPhone. So applications like Find My Car or general navigation applications that allow you to use just your watch to navigate to different places and get turn-by-turn -turn navigation on your watch, which is particularly useful if you're just walking around a city, all of that is not available when you're paired to an iPhone. One more GPS-related application that's not available on the Galaxy Watch when paired to an iPhone is Uber. And that's actually really handy for people who live in the city and use Uber often. Having it right on your wrist is actually really useful. Again, in my top 10 most useful apps video, I did cover Uber and how it works, and it's actually really nice. An important safety feature that's missing is the ability to send SOS messages. So as you can see on my Note 9 paired to my Gear S3, I have the option to send SOS requests. And if I tap this, I can turn this feature on. And what that does is it allows me to quickly press the home button three times to send an SOS message to an emergency contact or a few emergency contacts that I set up. So they receive a text that says, hey, I'm in need of help, SOS, something of that sort. And then it's also going to let them track my location for up to an hour. On top of that, if they call me after I've sent that request, it's going to automatically answer the phone call and set the speaker volume to the lowest level so that they can listen in on what's going on. So this is an incredible safety feature that's just not available when paired to an iPhone. The Galaxy Watch gets one more incredible feature when paired to an Android device that it doesn't get when paired to an iPhone, and that feature is called Remote Connection. So if you go into this gear connection menu here, you'll see that I have remote connection turned on. Now, what this does is it allows me to get notifications even when my watch isn't connected to my phone through Bluetooth. As long as my watch is connected to a Wi-Fi network and my phone is also connected to a network, either Wi-Fi or a cellular network, then I'll still be able to get all of my notifications on my watch. Now, my interaction with those notifications will be a bit more limited. I'll still be able to send and receive texts, but I won't be able to do things like make phone calls when I'm in this remote connection mode. Bottom line, if you're just looking for a stylish, swim-proof smartwatch with incredible battery life to get notifications, answer phone calls, and to track sleep and exercises with, the Galaxy Watch will be great even when paired to an iPhone. But if you want mobile payments, the ability to reply to texts, and get advanced features like smart home control and a camera remote, then you're better off just getting an Apple Watch. Drop a line down in the comments below Let me know if you think it's worth pairing a Galaxy Watch to an iPhone. And as always, like it if you liked it, share it if you loved it, and subscribe to see more content just like this. And don't forget to smack that notification bell so you can be the first to know when a new video drops. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.